First, a warning as we begin with confronting pictures out of Atlanta where two police officers have been fired after it was deemed they used excessive force tasering a couple as they drove from a protest after curfew. Atlanta's mayor made the decision to dismiss the officers, saying the video was shocking to watch. We start our live coverage with Amelia Brace in Washington, D.C. Amelia, the unrest is now literally at the president's front door. Yeah, absolutely. And I am standing out the front of the White House and you can see that the building behind me is still smouldering. The uh, fire brigade has just arrived to try to extinguish that. They've been kept busy with a number of spot fires in this area. There was an impromptu bonfire on the street here behind me. There were a number of cars set alight. Even a hotel, the front of our hotel, was set alight in what was really terrifying scenes. This all happened in the minute leading up to the 11 p.m. curfew. This is the first time that Washington, D.C. has had a curfew in place and you could really feel the tension rising between the protesters and the police in the minutes leading up to it. This is some of what we saw on the streets. So when I'm walking out of our hotel, you can see in the sky here, this is tear gas filling the air here. Here they've tried to set fire to the umbrellas outside our hotel. This entire area now, there are little fires everywhere. The most substantial appear to be near the White House. So just this smoke here, that is the exact direction of the White House. And now walking towards that, you can hear sirens coming from behind us. There's a series of uh, fireworks and other explosives going off in this area. All the way along here, you can see the destruction. This is a block from the White House. You can see they pulled a, a fire extinguisher off the wall. Everything is destroyed or vandalised, windows broken. So look at the scene here. This is a line of police making their way. They are forming a wall in front of the White House. Look behind them. You can see the flames burning in the park right in front of where the president is. What we know is to our right here is where the protesters have been pushed to. That is where you're hearing those very loud bangs exactly like that. So what we're seeing, the police are holding a line here. They soon are going to move down this street to try to push these protesters further away. And Anne, while it was obviously terrifying at the time, the good news is that that curfew has succeeded in really dissipating this crowd. You'll remember earlier there were thousands of people in this area and they were pushed out by, by that wall of police, as you saw. The bad news is that they have now regrouped in separate uh, groups around the city. So we're now seeing spot fires and looting and a number of businesses being broken into. So still very much a long night ahead. So Amelia, so much unrest, fires, tear gas protests at the White House. Where is the president? Well, and we have every reason to believe that he is here. We've not seen Donald Trump at all today. In fact, we haven't seen him since he was in Florida yesterday. But uh, as far as uh, the journalists responsible for following his movements, there was uh, no evidence that he left the White House at all today. He did tweet a number of times from the White House. And while all of this was going on, he simply put out a tweet saying law and order. Uh, in terms of tomorrow, he has already put out his plan for the day. And it's very similar to what we would see any other Monday, except he has scheduled a call with some state leaders to discuss this unrest. Amelia Brace live in Washington, D.C. Thank you, Amelia. Take care. U.S. Bureau Chief Ashley Mullaney is in Minneapolis where George Floyd was killed and this now nationwide upraising began last week. Ash, more frightening scenes today with protesters caught in the path of a speeding truck. Was anyone hurt? Uh, thankfully, it doesn't appear that any of those demonstrators were hurt, and uh, but it was a very disturbing scene to watch unfold on a major freeway here in Minneapolis. Uh, this oil tanker, fuel tanker, ploughing into a group of protesters on the I-35 uh, freeway. When he comes to a stop, he was pulled from the cabin, we understand, beaten by some of these protesters before police were able to pick him up and arrest him. Uh, Bogdan Vikurko, his name is, he is in tonight in police police custody after being treated at the hospital. Uh, he has been booked into a county jail as police investigate what the motive may have been uh, for this very disturbing incident, Anne. 
And Ash, the city there is under curfew but still a scene of anger and we believe the police have started making arrests. Yeah, this was the first time that we've seen mass arrests happening here in Minneapolis. We saw uh, dozens of uh, protesters being put in handcuffs this evening after breaking that curfew. We've seen a really different approach from police over the last two nights. Uh, when that curfew comes into effect, it's basically a no-tolerance policy. They're firing tear gas, firing stun grenades to clear out crowds. And for the most part, it seems to have worked. There's been about 150 arrests here in Minneapolis tonight. Uh, obviously the hope being that they could put an end to the sort of looting and arson that we've seen widespread across the city. Um, so that has definitely been the focus this evening uh, here in Minneapolis, Anne. To the Floyd family, I want you to know that my decision to fire all four officers was not based on some sort of hierarchy. Mr. Floyd died in our hands and so I, I, I see that as being complicit. And that was a police chief who we heard from this evening offering these words to the Floyd family that there will be justice. Of course, uh, Derek Chauvin has been arrested and charged with third degree murder over the death of George Floyd. Uh, and after days of unrest, for the first time, it does seem to be that there is some calm here on the streets. As you can see, there is still the National Guard uh, out here on the streets, but their presence here has gone some way in keeping things a little bit calmer tonight, Anne. Ash Mullaney live in Minneapolis. Take it easy, Ash. Thank you.